vegan cookies, fast food as well. Hello, welcome back to The Yoga Show. My name is Rose and today I want to talk to you about eating a plant-based diet. Now don't click away right away, I'm not going to be strict or mean to you, I'm going to just explain why I think it is important. Let's start with this week's question. And this question is actually why I chose this theme for this week, because it says, how do you start being vegan? I love this question because I was wondering the same thing for many, many years. I grew up as a vegetarian. My parents are both vegetarian as well. But the step towards veganism just seemed crazy to me, like crazy strict, crazy difficult. So I never kind of looked into it. I was too attached to my love for cheese to even want to consider going vegan. My boyfriend and I actually did this together, which was really nice. I think that made it a lot more easy for me to stick to it, even though I was already a vegetarian and he was still eating some meat at the time. Realize why you want to become a vegan. We realized that the effect of what we were eating was really a lot bigger than we had anticipated, than we had thought. We started with First of all, researching how we would be able to get the nutrients that we need. My boyfriend loves to go to the gym and wants to get enough protein, so we looked that up. And then look into the current recipes that you love to make and how you could change them slightly so that they remain in the options that you can cook and eat, but they will be vegetarian or vegan. For example, we used to love eating pasta with lots of cheese on it. We ate so much grated cheese looking back on it. It was insane. Anyway, so we decided to try eating this pasta without cheese and now we don't even think about it anymore. We don't miss it at all. Which to me, if you told me this like two years ago, I would have said you're crazy because cheese is like the best thing in the world. So if you're thinking that right now, I know how you feel. Don't worry, it's gonna be okay. So we had several dishes that we could just take the cheese out. If you're eating meat, you could also look into changing the meats into vegetarian or vegan alternatives. So we love eating chicken madras, which is made with chicken, but of course we put in the vegan chicken bits. There are a lot of options that then make your dish vegetarian. And if you leave out the cheese, then that can quite easily make your dish vegan. So it wasn't as difficult as we thought it would be. Of course, it's also great to research some new recipes. And actually later in this video, I'm gonna show you how we made vegan lasagna for the first time. And then if you look at your other meals during the day, if you look at your breakfast, if you like eating yogurt in the morning, like my boyfriend with muesli or whatever, use a soy or a coconut based yogurt. If you like to eat a morning cereal, you can substitute normal milk with Preferably oat milk, actually. Sustainably looking, oat milk is the best plant-based milk. If you like to make porridge like I do, you can definitely also make this with oat milk. I'll put in some extra coconut flakes for flavor and some cinnamon. And I also love to add in a cut up apple to sweeten it up a little bit for lunch or for breakfast, especially if you're Dutch. We love to eat sliced bread with toppings as breakfast and lunch actually. Bread usually is vegan. Just take a moment to check out your favorite products, their ingredients. If there is a butter or milk in there, then switch it up for another kind that doesn't have those ingredients because there are a lot of products that don't have dairy in them. So then what you put on your bread, if you like to use butter, there are great versions there are great plant-based butters. Even margarine, check out the package for sure. Some of them don't include any animal products. We love to eat peanut butter, which is vegan, yay. And then if you like to put cheese on your bread, which is a very Dutch thing, we started substituting that with hummus. Hummus is a paste made of chickpeas. There are lots of spreads that are actually vegan and that give you that salty taste that cheese does, but without using any dairy. So start slow, do some research and check out the labels of the products that you already love using. And one more thing, being vegan doesn't mean that you eat very healthy. There are a lot of unhealthy vegan recipes. There are lots of sweets that you can bake and cook like my other video where we bake 
vegan cookies. There is so much possible for fast food as well. Fries are vegan. So don't feel like you're gonna just eat like greens and vegetables. You can eat as unhealthy as you want while making sure that you are doing your part and helping reduce your carbon footprint. So that's why I love being vegan, not only for the animals, but also for my own physical health and for the planet. If you want to learn more about that, I'll link some documentaries below that we really enjoyed, like What the Health, which is on Netflix, Game Changers, which is really interesting as well. Of course, those are one-sided perspectives, and I know there are other perspectives as well, but it gives you a good, for us at least, a good motivation to start it and try it. Lastly, <laughs> this is a very long answer, I'm sorry about that. Lastly, don't make it too strict on yourself. I know some vegans can be super strict and kind of like in your face about it. I'm the opposite. I've done the whole extreme diet thing. If you watched my previous videos, it didn't work out great for me. I had an eating disorder for ages. I don't want to do anything too strict or too obsessively. Just start with trying it at home. I know eating out is a whole different story, but in your house, try and be vegan as much as you can and see how that works out for you. So that's my final tip for that. Let's move on to explained. This week, I want to mention ahimsa, which I mentioned in my previous video and I wanted to explain this. Ahimsa is a Sanskrit word for non-violence, doing no harm. You may have heard of it before. It was what Mahatma Gandhi used in his uh, peaceful protests. So that's what made it more well known than the other terms in its family. To understand where Ahimsa comes from, we have to take a step back first. Ahimsa is one of the Yamas, comes from the eight-limbed path. We'll talk about this in another video because I can't explain it in one video. But the important thing is that these are guidelines and principles to live by in order to live a peaceful, happy life. And the first yama, do you still follow me? It's going down, down, down. <laughs> the first yama is ahimsa. Now, ahimsa isn't just nonviolence against others. It focuses on nonviolence against any living being. So not just other people, but also animals and the earth and even yourself. Think of ahimsa not just in actions, in deeds, but also in your words, how you speak, and in your thoughts even. Making sure that you're not harming anyone with your words or your actions. People, but also animals. Can you do your part to not harm the earth? To live as sustainable as you can? When you look at it towards yourself, to live with compassion. How are you speaking towards yourself? How are you acting towards yourself? If you want to learn more about this, check my other video about body positivity. You'll find it on my channel. I hope this helps. I hope this explains the term a little bit better for you. And now it's time for the vegan lasagna. Are you ready? Let's try out this recipe. Today I want to take you through the process of cooking a vegan lasagna. I used to love lasagna and I was really sad when I became vegan because I thought I wouldn't be able to have it. And so we're trying out this recipe. This is our Christmas dinner actually. It includes butternut squash, or I just call them some kind of pumpkin, because I don't know the word in, in Dutch for them. Um, peppers, lots of tomatoes, of course, and garlic. I'll put all the ingredients down below. It includes coconut milk to make it nice and creamy, and lots of mushrooms as well. I have no idea if this recipe is any good. I took it from this book <laughs> by Ella, deliciously Ella. She has lots of recipes that aren't all vegan, but there are quite a few in there that are. Ella Woodward. So we're going to test it out and let's see how it goes. Yes, so try veganism. It isn't as hard as you think and it can create lovely food. Lots of nice veggies. So let's cut all that up and start cooking it. 
The main ingredient of this recipe is butternut squash. You need two for this recipe to serve four. You see us using three because we're making it for more people. But all the quantities that I mention are for four. Cut them up first. Be careful when you cut them up because this is pretty hard. Don't cut your fingers. On the inside, it is like a pumpkin. I don't know if you've cut or prepared a pumpkin before. I was taught to use a spoon to get all the seeds out and scrape out the little slimy bits that aren't very nice. And then cut it into long strands. Again, being careful with how you cut it because it can be pretty difficult to cut. And those pieces are a little bit more easy to peel. So peel off the skin and then cut up the whole thing into little cubes and throw it into your pan. And don't forget to have a good time with your cooking. So I'm having a glass of wine. Put your pot with the squash and some water on the stove and let it boil or steam for about 20 minutes until it's soft. Time for garlic. Break off the cloves that you need. According to the recipe, it is three cloves. And then a really good tip to cut them easily is to cut off the little end first and then to squish the clove with a ladle. That way you break the insides and the outer edge, you can just take off very easily the, the skin and then cut them up into little pieces. For peppers, you always have like the little seeds inside and a really fun thing to know is that there are two kinds, the male and the female peppers. If you're cooking something like we are today, then pick the one with three ends. That's the one that doesn't have many seeds. The one with four has more seeds, but also a little bit more taste. So that's an interesting tip for you. For this recipe, you need four red peppers and you cut them into small bite-sized pieces. Then get your 500 grams of mushrooms and clean them off, just wiping off the dirt. Cut them all up into small bits. You also need four dozen cherry tomatoes, cut them up as well. My boyfriend did that for me while I was cutting the other stuff, so yay. Now grab a big pan, put it on your stove, add some oil and wait for the oil to get really hot before you put the garlic in. Saute the garlic for a little bit by itself. And once it starts to look a little bit crispy and brown, add in the tomatoes and the peppers. This is when we realized that our pan was actually way too small for the amount of veggies that still needed to go in there. So we spread it out over two different pans because we didn't have a bigger one. So make sure that you use a pan that is big enough. Then add in the mushrooms. Let that whole thing simmer for a while. In the meantime, take your butternut squash, pour out any excess water you may have. It should feel really soft. Add in a can of coconut milk. We're using one that's really nice and creamy. At this point, I was very skeptical because it smells really sweet like a Thai dessert more than lasagna, but don't worry. Take a blender and blend the whole thing into a smooth, creamy sauce, adding in some salt and pepper any way you like. We also added some other herbs as well and blend those in as well. Don't forget to do a little taste test to make sure the sauce is to your liking. Check on your tomato vegetable sauce. Once that's ready, it's time to start putting it all together. In your oven dish, start with a layer of the tomato veggie sauce, then add a layer of the pumpkin sauce and put your lasagna sheet, which I learned are actually called lasagna noodles, in the sauce, making sure they get a little bit wet on all sides. Create a few more layers in that same way, tomatoes, pumpkin, pasta, until either your pot is full or your pan is empty. Ending with a layer of the pumpkin sauce and then laying a layer of tin foil over top of that to make sure that it doesn't burn in the oven. I think, I'm not quite sure. We preheated the oven to 200 degrees Celsius and put them in there for 20 minutes. After putting everything together, we noticed at least half of the butternut squash sauce is left over. So either we did something wrong with our calculations or the recipe's amounts don't really make sense. For now, we're gonna get changed quickly because we have our Christmas dinner, so we have to look kind of fancy and I'm still wearing my yoga clothes. So. 20 minutes to get ready and to have a little wine. 
After getting on my dress and my heels and doing my hair and my makeup, I got the dishes out of the oven. They were really hot. This little tin foil was meant to make sure that it doesn't burn at the top, but actually it looked a little bit soft still. So I put them back in for a while without the tin foil cover. And then we got this. It's finished. We're going to serve it now. So it turned out pretty well. We kind of didn't think about the pasta expanding while it was cooking in the oven, so it got all wrinkly at the top, which I don't mind, I think it looks quite funny. And the um, pumpkin sauce actually tasted really, really nicely like creamy and almost like cheese. And it also made it look like it was covered in cheese, so that was really cool. Our guests really enjoyed eating it, they th thought it tasted really nice. And we have a whole other tin of lasagna leftover for whatever we want to eat. Leftovers! It's been a great success in my opinion and I hope you try this recipe as well. Like I said, it is from Deliciously Ella. Her book is just beautiful. I have it here. It's really thick and just really good quality with lots of recipes. This has been my first cooking video, recipe video. Would you like to see more of these? about eating vegan and what you can cook and what you can create, let me know please because I'd like to make more if you're interested. Didn't that just look delicious? If you are listening to this as a podcast, definitely check out the photo that I will try to add to the show notes. And I'd love to see if you try it, send me your photos, tag me on Instagram, I would love to see. The shout out of this week, of course, goes to Ella. I only had her book, I got it from someone. I didn't realize that she also puts out a lot of YouTube videos, so you can check her channel. She has an Instagram with lots of awesome foods and recipes and a blog as well. And of course this book that is beautiful, it's such a nice design and I love everything that she puts in there. It's honestly delicious to look at as well as to eat. I especially recommend the courgette pasta that's in there, spaghetti out of courgettes. And I thought it wouldn't fill us up. We couldn't even finish our plates. So we definitely love the recipes in this book. If you're trying veganism for the first time and you want to treat yourself to something nice to help you, this book could be a good choice. Her handle is deliciously Ella on everything. So Instagram, YouTube, all that stuff and her website as well. So check her out and let me know how you go. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you want more yoga, body positivity and veganism. Also lots of plants. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.